This is your Catholic Daily Journal for Thursday, March the 7th, 2019. It's the feast of Saints Perpetua and Felicity. Their story is told in one of the oldest known Christian texts titled The Passion of Saint Perpetua, Saint Felicitas, and Their Companions. It's a diary written by Perpetua, which is intact in both Latin and Greek. Most modern-day scholars believe the text is authentic, although it may have been edited slightly over the course of years. Perpetua was a noble woman and a mother who was about 22 at the time of her death. Felicity was a slave who was herself pregnant. They were imprisoned in Carthage in what is now Tunisia in North Africa. It was customary to celebrate the Roman emperor's birthday with games. And in 203, under the emperor Septimius Severus, the noblewoman Felicity, the slave Perpetua, another slave Rivacatus, two freedmen Saturninus and Secundulus, and another man named Saturus were thrown to the lions as part of the games in Carthage. After Constantine ended the persecutions of Christians, a huge church, the Basilica Maiorum, was built above their tomb. Today wasn't always their feast day in the modern Catholic calendar, though. They've been bumped around a good bit by another great saint who died today and whose name is perhaps more familiar. St. Thomas Aquinas, a nobleman from central Italy and a Dominican friar who is known as the Angelic Doctor for his brilliant writings and his personal humility, died today. Aquinas was born rich and chose poverty. He studied in Italy and in Paris and lived at just the right moment to bring together the thought of four hugely important but seemingly irreconcilable sources. The sacred scripture, especially the writings of St. Paul, St. Augustine, who was himself a Neoplatonist, that is, a student of Plato, Dionysus the Areopagite, who was a Greek convert, converted by St. Paul, and a very different kind of Neoplatonist, that is, a student of Plato. Those three were easy enough to bring together. After all, there had been Christian Platonists for hundreds of years. But Aquinas lived at just the right moment to discover the work of Aristotle. His work had been lost to the West and was recovered through the Muslim scholars in southern Spain. And with those texts, Thomas Aquinas managed to synthesize the two great Greeks, Plato and Aristotle, through the lens of the Bible and the Christian Platonism of Augustine and Dionysus. This great synthesis, as it was called, was perhaps the most important intellectual project of the last 15 centuries. All of modern philosophy can be understood as an effort to undo Aquinas' thought so as to replace the supremacy of God with the supremacy of the human person. Even today, when modern philosophers make bold statements about truth or science or human nature, a single quotation from Aquinas is often enough to squash their ideas flat. So much so that many modern thinkers start their work by dismissing scholasticism as old-fashioned as if that somehow makes it untrue. In addition to his brilliance, though, Aquinas was also a saintly and humble man who referred to himself as the dumb ox and loved to do manual labor far more than he liked to write. In a nice coincidence, today is the traditional birthday of Aristotle himself in 322 BC. Of course, we don't have any way to know exactly on what day Aristotle was born. It's ironic that he had such a love for codification and organization and we don't know his own birthday. Even the summary of Aristotle's life would take 10 daily journals to read out. So we can simply say that he was the student of Plato, he is the grandfather of much modern science and philosophy, and his writings are voluminous, challenging, and incredibly rewarding. The Catholic Daily Journal is supported by listeners like you. For more information, visit catholicunderground.com. Until next time, be on the lookout for the Lord at work in your life.